Can you see the board? Okay, so for this lesson, we're... Yes? Can I switch with Ryan? She can't see the board. Sure. Ryan, you were having such difficulty during the homework review. I'm just trying to help Ryan. Okay, so when, for this lesson, we're, this is our PVA lesson. What do you think PVA stands for? Position. Position. Vector. Velocity. Velocity. Acceleration. Acceleration. Very good. So when I talk about PVA all year, I'm talking about position, velocity, acceleration. Let's put the phones away. Okay. All right. An average rate of change from A to B. This is the slope of the secant line. It's just your old-fashioned slope between two points. So it's just change in the y values divided by change in the x values. All right? Nothing new there. An instantaneous rate of change. An instantaneous rate of change is something that just happens at one time. Bam, it's happening. What's that rate of change? This is the slope of the tangent line. Or in other words, the derivative of prime of c. All right, so average rate of change of anything. It doesn't have to be velocity. It can be a rate of change of anything, right? Dollars per day widgets per hour, right? Whatever. Um, so anyway, your average rate of change, that's old-fashioned slope formula, just change in y over change in x. Your instantaneous rate of change, that's where you need the derivative. Okay, let's talk about a few just general notes for the blah, 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 PVA. Okay. The derivative of position is velocity, All right? Because velocity is the rate of change of position. Zoom in a little bit. Okay. So the derivative of position is velocity. What do we call the rate of change of the velocity? Sorry. The acceleration. The derivative of velocity is acceleration. Velocity is a vector. That means velocity represents both how fast you're going and what direction you're going in. It has a magnitude and it has a direction. Speed is a scalar. scalar. Speed is just how fast are you going, right? So the, the sign of velocity actually determines the direction. If velocity can be positive or negative. Speed is always positive. Speed is the absolute value of velocity, just how fast are you going. things we need to learn. Displacement. This is how far you are from where you started. And then distance. Use my bad English here. I'm going to use the word in the definition. This is the total distance you've traveled. I'm going to do a quick example to demonstrate the difference. <laughs> Okay, so 
suppose I start here and I travel 10 feet to the right. So I start at a spot, I walk 10 feet to the right. Then I turn around, bless you, and I walk 5 feet back to the left. Then, let's make it even harder. Wow. I turn around again, I'm just wacky, and I walk another two feet back to the right. Okay? Seven. So, my displacement, well that's how far I am from where I actually started. It's my ending position minus my beginning position. Well, let's see. I was at 10, and then I backed up to 5, and then I moved 2 over. Where did I end? 7. seven. I am actually 7 feet to the right of where I started. My displacement would be 7 feet. Does that make sense? It's my final position minus my beginning position. My distance... That's the total that I walked, right? So total that I walked would be 17 feet. Say I completed one, a mile lap that was just in a great big circle, and I'm back where, my, where I started, what would my displacement be? Zero. Zero, but my distance would be one mile, right? Okay, just, do you get the difference? Okay. All right, so displacement, how far you are from where you started, distance is how far you actually traveled during that whole thing. All right, I have four more quick notes I do want you to just copy down. And move this up. Okay, a particle is at rest when the velocity is zero. All right, when a velocity is zero, that means you've stopped. The particle changes direction. We often call this particle motion. It's, you'll see it called linear motion, particle motion, whatever. Uh, the particle changes direction when the velocity changes sign. Ooh, I said some sign lines coming on. Yay. Yay is right. Okay. First salsa lines. <laughs> now, what do I think what do you think ink and deck stand for? Increasing. Increasing and decreasing. The velocity is increasing when the acceleration is positive. Because remember, if acceleration is the derivative of velocity, that means acceleration is the slope of velocity. So when its slope is positive, the graph's going up, right? So velocity is increasing when acceleration is positive. It's decreasing when acceleration is negative. Speed is different. Speed is increasing when acceleration and velocity have the same sign. They could be both positive or both negative. Speed will be increasing. And I'll show you how this works graphically, but not right now. Speed is decreasing when acceleration and velocity have opposite signs. How many of you are taking or have taken physics? Okay. Two traps that you'll fall into from your physics days in this class. Number one, not everything in this class is measured in meters per second. So I know that you are in the habit of writing meters per second for every single unit that you have to write. You've got to read the problem because some of these are in miles, they're in feet, they're in hours, whatever. You've got to be careful when I ask for units that you use the units in the problem, right? Don't just assume meters per second because you lose that units points every time, every time. The other thing to remember is that in this class, 
almost 100%, not 100%, but just about every single time, the sign of the velocity follows this, the coordinate plane, meaning that when the object is moving to the right, the velocity is positive. When it's left, the velocity is negative. If it's moving up, velocity is positive. Down, velocity is negative. So I know in physics it can be like in relation to stuff, right? Here, just think positive up, negative down, positive right, negative left. So it just follows the coordinate plane. Okay, it's much more straightforward. So once in a while they might ask for something in relation, but it's it's very rare. So it's uh, it's almost always positive up, negative down. Follows the Pund principle. Positive up, <laughs> negative down. Okay, so we're gonna do a little worksheet. A little worksheet. Yes. Uh, now the front side of this worksheet is the problem we're gonna walk through right now, just kind of give you a little intro to PBA. The back side has a lot of really good practice problems on it. And I will tell you that the PVA that I put on Friday's quiz is a very similar to stuff on the back side of this worksheet. Number six. So, yes, it's number six. No, I'm not telling you which number it is. As a matter of fact, it might not be any specific number. It might be a culmination of several problems. This prize has a problem. I just come with this one. You have a problem, Louise? Okay, show it to me after class. <coughs> okay, so we have a ball being thrown vertically up from the edge of a building. So pretend the ball starts right at the exact height of the building and goes straight up, stops for a moment, and then falls down until it hits the ground. Okay, it's actually not, we're not talking with parabolic motion, we're just linear. But I'm going to draw, draw the lines next to each other just so you can see it easier. Now, when in number one where it says sketch a diagram and label important values at those places, um, there are three important spots. This spot, this spot, and this spot. And there are three things that are zero. One, a different thing at each of those spots. Can anyone tell me what is zero at the very beginning of the problem? Is your, if your velocity is zero when you start with the ball, it wouldn't go up, it would just fall. You have to have an initial velocity. So, ah, scrape me with you. I'll give you a hint it's the beginning. Time. Time is zero at the beginning. <laughs> All right. In the beginning, time was zero. At the top, what is zero up here? Velocity is zero. Whenever something changes direction, it has to pass through zero. Because if you think of the velocity as a graph of a function, to pass to go from a positive to a negative, going from up to going down, it has to pass through the x-axis or become discontinuous. So, but we're going to have a continuous function. So velocity is zero up here at the top. What about down here at the bottom? Velocity and acceleration. Velocity, acceleration are zero. So if there is no velocity when you hit the ground, what that really means is we could all just jump off buildings and just you know, float around. Right? I mean, I can. <laughs> okay. There has to be velocity up upon impact. There is obviously after you hit the ground, you've stopped, right? right? But at the moment you hit the ground, there's velocity, right? And acceleration. But there is definitely something that's zero here. Distance. Your height, right? Your height is zero. I'm actually 5'11. But we're just talking about the little ball. All right, so your height is zero. All right. 
So, here we go. Question number two. So you're going to use these three zeros to answer just about every question. Question number two says, how tall is the building? So you look at where you're at the height of the building. What's zero there? Time. So we want the height at time zero, which means we want h of zero. What is h of zero? 80 what? 80 feet. Okay, when does the ball reach maximum height? So what is zero when it's at a maximum height? Velocity is zero, right? So, but we don't have a velocity function. How can we find a velocity function when all we have is position? Guess and check. Derivative! Velocity is the derivative of position. Velocity is the derivative of position. No calculators? Jacob, put that away. Okay. So, we have our height function is given. So, velocity is the derivative of the height function. So, everybody take a look and write down the derivative. What's your velocity function? Negative 32t plus 64. Now, do we want to know the velocity when time is zero, or do we want to know when the velocity equals zero? When the velocity equals zero. So we're going to set this equal to zero, and we're going to solve, and what's the only t value? Which, what is it? Two. two. Very good. All right, so two seconds. All right, so after two seconds, it's, it's, it's flying for quite a while. All right, how long does it take to hit the ground? What do we know at the ground? Well, we see the force. Oh, I'm, oh, what is the maximum height? I'm sorry. What is the maximum height? So how, our, how do I find a height? Plug it back in. Plug what back in where? The derivative. The formula. Which is the original formula. Plug 2 into our height function. Right? Plug 2 into the height function. And I'm going to tell you it's 144. All right, number 5. How long does it take to hit the ground? What do we know at the ground? Height is zero. So we need to set our height function equal to zero. Now, in order to solve this, what would you do first? LDF. Before factoring, I would I would divide everything by negative 16, right? T squared minus 4t minus 5, and now factor. Take a second and factor. Okay, so t minus 5, t plus 1, so I get t is 5 or negative 1. Okay, now you can have negative time, right, because that just means the time before it started. However, in this problem they specifically said t had to be greater than or equal to 0, right? So make sure you look at your restraints or constraints before you start. So it's only at 5 seconds. Alright, so the next question, what is the initial velocity? How would we find initial velocity? What's happening at the beginning? Time is zero. Where do you think we want to plug that time zero into? The velocity function, right? We're looking for v of zero. What is v of zero? 64. What would be the units? Feet per second. Okay, number seven, velocity at one second and two seconds. So V of one, V of two. Just plugging in a one. What's V of one? 
32 feet per second. What's V of 2? Zero. Zero. All right. Question 8. What is the height at t equals 3? How would we find that? Plug in 3 for the height equation. Try to plug 3 into our height function, h of 3. And h of 3 is, let's see, here, 1, 5. Oh, it's, I'll use my calculator. I'm going to cheat, but I'll, I'll let you guys cheat with me. Maybe 16 times 9. If only you had a calculator. Times 3 plus 8. Okay, 128 feet. We have smaller numbers. Um, I've worked out your quiz. It, it works. Everything works out real easy. I did it without a calculator. All right, what is the speed when it hits the ground? Is there a formula we have for speed? What, what's the only thing we know about speed? Total distance. It's absolute speed is the absolute value of velocity. So first we're going to have to find the velocity when it hits the ground, right? Well, what do we know about when it hits the ground? Height is zero. Height is zero. And to find where the height was zero, did we find? Five seconds. That it happened at five seconds. So we're looking for the velocity at five seconds. So that's negative 32 times five, so negative 160 plus 64, negative 96. Sounds about right. Okay. Feet per second. So, what's the speed? Positive 96. So it's negative. Velocity is negative because it's going down, right? Speed is the absolute value of velocity. What is the acceleration at 1 and 2 seconds? How do I find an acceleration function? Derivative of velocity. So what is the acceleration function? Are you telling me acceleration is just negative 32? It's a constant? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, it's because it's gravity. Oh, you're right. So what's A of 1? Negative Negative 32. What would be the units? Feet per second squared. Good. And be careful. Don't put feet squared per second. It's feet per second per second or feet per second squared, right? Per second, yeah, per second. Okay. And then same thing for A of 2. Since it's acceleration due to gravity, it's not going to change. Does that make sense? All right, there's your first PVA problem, start to finish. Homework tonight has a lot of PVA. It also has some aver average versus